Yes, Please. good morning. Um, well, it's an uh, it's, uh, honor and um, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share uh, the, the learnings of, uh, and the insights of this experience with you. And, uh, and I can tell you I have 20 years of, uh, of being in the field, of doing a lot of uh, international but also local work because everything that I learned at the global level with all these wonderful ideas, I always was, had the, the, the passion also to see how it happened, it could happen in, on the ground. And let's say that this project is to some extent the project of uh, my own uh, maturity because uh, I, through the, the, the failures, the mistakes, the doubts that I had in the past, and many of the things we could uh, somehow experiment in this project, no? Uh, a little bit of the background, you know, it's, a, it's an adaptation to climate change project and uh, in one of the very challenging areas, not only of Brazil, but throughout the world, because I think the semi-arid areas, as you know, you know, in the, in the climate uh, arena, are the ones where it's proved that, uh, that, that the change, the climatic changes are already occurring. And the, the main signs that we have of that is the change in the patterns of rain. And, uh, and what we hear from the farmers, from everybody, they say they, they, they don't uh, know how to articulate it with our words, but they say, you know, what we feel is that we don't know the, 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 the weather is going, has gone crazy because we don't know anymore when is the, 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 the season of planting, the season of harvesting, because everything has changed. And the, so they can have floods and they can have very long periods of drought, you know. So what, uh, what it means is that some of these areas in which still a lot of people live and have their, their origins are, if nothing is done, they will become uh, uh, inop inopstable, in inhospitable, no? People, places where people can't live. And of course, it's very interesting because uh, uh, in Brazil, and I think it's true also in other places of the world because I had the, the chance of talking with Africans and so, what they say is that uh, the same, is that these are people that are very connected to the to, to their land because they have gone through, you know, it's like we see the Jewish, you know, this, this, if it's so, so challenging, but still it's, uh, it's that power of being in a place where, where you have your origins and also we have gone through many stories, many challenges. And so that was the case uh, of our project. So we, we, a little bit of uh, how I got there, you know, because I live in Rio, we, for, for 20 years, we, we kind of help uh, to facilitate and create a big network of women's radio programs all over Brazil. We, we, we had, uh, at after, after, let's say, 15 years, we had like 400 of these women's programs, which, are like, which act like hubs of uh, sustainability, of uh, local sustainable development in these uh, small places. And one of the places, many of these places are in the semi-arid region, no? So one day, and we, we brought computers because we wanted to connect uh, the, the radio with the internet, and one day I was with all these women, they said, Thais, you have the computers, but when are we going to get out of the bucket, no? To, 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 to water the plants. And we, I said, but, uh, but why? Because he said, we have, uh, we have this, 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 uh, this uh, water reservoirs, but we don't have that technology, which would be so important for us, because we still do not have food security in our region and all that. And from that, uh, I mean, we start to mobilize uh, the, the, the resources, and uh, we found the people that w were interested, and this project has started also as a change, uh, as a lab of South South North, which is an organization that's, that's part of CDKN, was one of the first movers in terms of, um, of um, leapfrogging projects for adaptation and mitigation to climate change in the developing world. And this was the, the, I mean, I was the director of capacity building 
And this was the project I said, I can't, uh, I mean, find a methodologist to teach people in capacity building and if we don't really try to do one ourselves in a very challenging situation that we can then have the lessons and, uh, and, uh, and uh, systemize that experience to really uh, uh, build the capacity. I personally, you know, over my many years of work in which I also have dealt with academics, with, uh, with global level, but I believe that at the end we really learn when we put hands on and we do things, you know, because then you find many situations like the one that uh, Martin was talking about that you don't know, you know, and that uh, all your knowledge, whatever, has to surrender to that situation that uh, that doesn't uh, is not doesn't fit uh, with uh, what we thought, and then new resources have to kind of emerge in the in terms of uh, of pulling all together so you can continue. And in this situation, we had many of these. Of, uh, in every step, uh, we were placed in a, in, a, in a situation of not knowing, of having to wait and try and error, try and error, in, in, in motivate uh, people, you know, which is hard because there, were, there are people from the university, there are people that are, that are local but also are very skeptical because uh, uh, the policies and people that have gone before, they didn't really met their expectations or they, they rise, they, they raise uh, uh, expectations that were never met. So you have to deal with, uh, in a little, in this little situation, you have to deal with the past, uh, the present, the future, the, the different uh, cultures and uh, negativity, which is very strong, you know, and so in every situation it was that how can we pull that energy so that we don't give up, you know? And, uh, and so I learned a lot uh, and uh, I was given because also of my experience, you know, in all this kind of methodologies of new process of this and that and my personal interest uh, of really helping to hold it together. I think it was my main, my main, it's still my main role as a facilitation of this collective collaboration. No? So I'll tell you a little bit of the steps of this story and then we have a, a time maybe to talk about this, these issues which I think are very important for all of us. Okay? So that's, uh, that's, uh, um, so that's the place. No? You see these are Brazil which is it, which is uh, the Amazonia, everybody, everybody knows, and uh, the, the biome of Caatinga, which is one of the challenging ones because uh, it, is, it, is, it has been a lot uh, destroyed and deforestated, but, uh, but uh, it's in that region. So these are the studies that we did in terms of uh, hotspots, I mean in terms of the impact of climate, you know, and, and, and as you see, it's, uh, that region is, is already proved uh, because there are regions that they then don't say it's climate, it's that and that, but that region, uh, the science says yes, there is, it is affecting, you know, because El Nino and because of uh, all these things, but uh, that's, that's, uh, that's accepted. So what, what happened over the years, you know, the government, because uh, all the regions that have poverty have a record of, uh, of uh, the government funds, of the World Bank, of many agencies, so there is all that story and nobody knows and the, and the failures also get lost because nobody knows exactly why it failed. But uh, what we found uh, as we got there was the total disconnect of uh, these different uh, uh, streams of policy, you know, and that uh, for me is one of the most, uh, 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 let's say, most surprising. I would like to have a, 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 a word which was stronger because, I mean, how come the Brazilian government, you know, has, has Lula all over the world, we say that Lula has, the go Lula government has end poverty because he gave a lot of microcredited funds for the people. But in that region, for example, which is proven that you can't continue deforestation, 
the money goes at the end, because people don't know what to do with the money, to buy cattle. And so they increased that deforestation. So that was what we found, you know. I mean, a place in which, uh, in which people don't have food security. Youth, uh, like uh, in 11, every 11 young people, seven leave, you know, and they end in gangs in the outskirts of the cities. But how come the money from microcredit, which is very subsidized, end up in the hands of people to buy cattle? Because this is what we found. And why? Because people don't want to risk, you know. They, they, they are afraid that if they are going to do agriculture, they don't know the technology, they don't know from where to start, and at least cattle they know that they will get something, you know, and cattle is more unlikely to die in these long drought periods, you know, while, uh, while the, 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 the crops can, can, can get very easily lost, you know, so that was what we found. Every family has a cow or, or, or a bull, but especially a cow, and that's what the consequence, you know. So, we then, I am using the, the, the I don't know if, if many people know, but I know that Pedro does, you know, I think that the framework, as we have uh, the framework of the U, I think for, for the local development and that idea of the Phoenix economy, you know, that we are recreating the economy from, uh, from the ashes, because this is really what we found, and that we found in many of these places, you know, so I, 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 I like the, 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 the that framework of volans because uh, it, uh, you always have to start from something, you know, and experiment from there. And uh, it fits very well our model. And I think in terms of explaining the phases uh, uh, we, we have been going through, I think it's very useful. So it's, um, so which was the Eureka? The record was the amount of water. We said, how come, you know, and I have this friend uh, with whom I, uh, I, I'm doing the, this, the, this work, which is like uh, many of you here of Oxford, you know, a very, an, an environmental engineer, very well trained uh, in the elitist school, but uh, he was, when I found him, he was so depressed because he said, I can't find meaning. And I said, come to Brazil and we are going to do something. And he has been a critical person in there, you know, learning a lot, but with all these skills. But uh, he said, I can't understand, you know, because his field is water. I can't understand how come if you have all these, these, these dams and things that, uh, that people are still using buckets, you know, to cultivate. Why not, knowing the history of, of Italy, you know, of small agricultures, that, 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 uh, of cooperatives and, uh, and uh, small uh, irrigation uh, and all this technology that we have available for this kind of situation. Why, with the amount of money that was spent in building these dams, we didn't have uh, that technology, that small technology accessible. And then started the long, <laughs> a long, uh, uh, st long uh, road of, of, stair, of going through stairs of uh, all kinds of difficulties. And uh, these are, uh, I mean, we, we, we could find that the technology exists also, you know, which is drip, drip irrigation and uh, organopony, which is, which, uh, which uh, uh, needs very, very, requires very, very few water because the water goes through. And this was technology available in Brazil, but, uh, but imagine where? In the south, you know, because and they are like uh, one of, uh, of the companies, one of the technology providers is responsible for 40% of the market of irrigation in Brazil, which is a very known country by agriculture, but nothing in that region of the world. They, they didn't even think, you know. So we went through the process of how we, you, you can provide the, the, the technology local. The local retailers would sell that, this technology for, for three times the price that was, it was sold in Sao Paulo. So the first thing was like, uh, like uh, Martin was saying, you know, we can't uh, ask these, uh, these farmers to pay for the technology, you know, like, uh, 
the amount of, that that it would cost locally. You know, so we had to re-engineering a whole process in which the technology could be provided locally. And how you did it? By talking to the provider, by finding a way in which the local cooperatives could be the, the retailers, to, could, uh, who could become the retailers. That took uh, one year, I mean, going back. And, uh, so how do you hold the first point? How do you hold the attention? of the people that are there, six months at least, not, not a year. So one year, the whole process of establishing that. How do you hold the attention and the interest you know, of the people that are on board? So you have to tell the story all the time. You have to, to really make them excited that once you go over that obstacle, it's going to be something more stable. No? And then, and then, and then, and then we also needed the, the, the local capacity, the technicians to measure the land, to do all these steps. And, uh, and why not uh, use the local, the, the young farmers, you know, to that? It doesn't matter that they, they don't have a college or, or, or a lot of education. They can learn because they know that. And we have at least two, that's uh, some, uh, when they speak, uh, I, I just become like this, all, all that they know, you know, and so we did uh, that training of uh, brought them to Sao Paulo, so there was a lot of uh, kind of uh, movement around uh, just creating the possibility of bringing the irrigation technology to a place where there is water, the need of water is so big because 10 million people live in that region, but uh, uh, there was not the technology to create agriculture, which is key, because they don't have food security. 90% of what they eat comes from uh, thousands of kilometers away, you know, like a, at least a thousand. So if there is anything, if the roads are interrupted, these people would uh, starve and uh, die or migrate to another region, you know. Just in a small thing, you see all the the disconnect that exists and how to, 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 like to articulate again these connections, how many steps you have to do, you know? So then, then we, we, we also needed, uh, you know, because the microfinance, you know, you go to these local banks, the, the people that are there behind their desk, the, the last thing that they want to, 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 to listen is to have any kind of trouble, you know, or any kind of risk. So how could we, we wouldn't uh, change the, 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 the trend of the government money. So we had to create a private revolving fund, you know, from the projects we start so that this thing could grow, which, uh, which we did, you know with the local bank, but a private fund, and that is working. So, and, uh, and, and sell the products, no? In the local markets, but also, you know, that, uh, that, that, that people had, because that was another question. How, once we produce, what we do with that? What we can't consume, how we can earn cash, because they do with the cattle, no? They sell the milk, so how they could uh, sell the other products, no? So these were, so how, how is uh, not to go to too many details because I think uh, I'm not uh, counting exactly the time. So the cooperatives start to sell the technology and now they make profits, you know, because, uh, because they became the retailers of the, the technology providers which uh, stay in the south of Brazil. The south of Brazil is the, the developed part of Brazil, where Sao Paulo is, Rio is, you know, and the north is the, the le, le, least developed. And, uh, and, uh, and so farmers start to get more money because they sell in the local market. Once uh, the, the, the things came from outside, and now 60% of what uh, is consumed locally comes from the local farmers. Uh, uh, and we found, because the, the question is in the very dry, dry, uh, dry, dry the season, 
you can't really uh, totally uh, uh, rely on what is produced locally. But uh, all the year there are these fruits, you know, the, the, these trees that everybody has in their in their in their in their houses, the, the like umbu and all that. So we are in the process of processing also the the fruits of these trees, which were wasted because uh, there was no way of processing them. And we are also working into, because um, cattle is part of, uh, of the local culture, so what we have been doing in research is show how if you have semi-confined uh, cattle, uh, cows especially, you can have a higher productivity of milk and at the same time not to degrade so much your your land, you know. So this is a research that is going on, you know. It's a, it's a, it's easy to say like this, but it was very, <laughs> very. I mean, very challenging to to go through it. But we have been there five years intensively, att with intention, attention. So the 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 going through that uh, that uh, that Volans framework, you know, it's a. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I personally know, and uh, we were yesterday, some of you were in the Pamela uh, uh, thing. I, I think that in, the, in our countries, uh, I mean, organizations like Ashoka, like uh, we're, we're critical in creating that idea of the social entrepreneur, the hero, or the heroine that could uh, really take uh, from nothing and uh, and uh, do something, but uh, but I think that if you want to do something with continuity and sustainability, you need uh, a collective group of people that really take on that process. You know, you need an ecosystem of of organizations and people from that organizations that uh, are awake and uh, really committed to that possibility. You know, and that's what we have been doing with. Uh, Little by little, by mobilizing the different uh, uh, institutions, governmental that were there, some private people, you know, which is not easy because they say it's, it's very difficult because it's too far, it's too remote, it's this and that. But at the end, uh, when, uh, when we are showing some results, we are getting more of their attention. The local organizations, no, because uh, I think they are critical and it's critical that they understand and go out uh, in these regions. One of the problems we face as well is that these people have been so, um, uh, the word is not spoiled, but I would say to some extent by assistance, you know, and we offer them something that they really have to be engaged in. It's, it's hard. The first, uh, the first stages were not easy, you know, because people say, why do I do that if I can get the same amount of money and do nothing, you see? And so you have really to, to involve them in a process of learning, that they say that it's not just money that, uh, that matters in life, but it's also to be engaged in something that you are valued by what you do and all that. You no, know, when you want awards, we bring everybody to the awards, so and we, we make them uh, travel. So this, this has created that idea that adapter set is something that uh, is new. They don't know exactly how to say it, but it's new. And they go and come, and there are people that come. We have had forums there, and in these forums, there are people that ministers, people that come from all over Brazil. and. Uh, and everybody likes because they think uh, it's not uh, so much what we did, it's the energy that is there. Now that people say there is something different in here and, and we are all part of that, you know? So more or less this is our ecosystem by now and uh, we have uh, integrated the, the research organization of Brazilian Brapa, you know, that some of you know, it's incredible. 80, 90 percent of work of Embrapa that is supported by the taxpayer in Brazil is to support the, the agribusiness and very, very little to support what, what would be a source of, uh, because Brazil ha is a big country with a lot of possibility for agriculture. You have to 
to put people back into, into cultivating the land. You know, there is no place for people in all these cities doing what, you know. So that move requires a whole vision, but also a mechanism from all these institutions. So we really have been trying to work with them, overcoming a lot of difficulties because, uh, of course, nobody, everybody wants to the easy way, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but the, 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 but once they get in and they get and they see the, the, the source of, uh, of, of movement and, uh, and the things that everybody gets, they, they get more involved. Yeah, I just, questions uh, because I'm, I'm, you've raised a number of yeah, I just, uh, really important the, I'm just thinking. Yeah, the, this is the last slide. You know, the economy, you know, uh, uh, the, the points of economy. Uh, we use uh, the infrastructure that already exists and better irrigation uh, and integration of public policy, food security, which I mentioned, which is very important, new opportunities for youth that can, can remain in the place, ground for new enterprise to grow in new technology that becomes widespread. You know? And more or less the pictures that show that. And finally, uh, I think this is an important question. No? It's a long road, but uh, how can the lessons of a, a small project like this contribute to improve policy making so that it's really more integrated and more attentive to what is real, uh, what has value, and what is viable. So. Thank you. <laughs>